Your fantasy draft is rapidly approaching. If you have pick one through six, anywhere in between that one, two, three, four, five, six, this video is for you. I've done like a hundred drafts already this off season on underdog. So I've been tracking trends in ADP and where players are going and where the best value pockets in drafts are positionally for y'all. This video is for you. If you have pick one through six in your fantasy draft, we're going to go through five different drafts that I have done, three of them on the underdog platform. And I heard y'all, a lot of you guys were yelling because I already did this for pick seven through 12. So if you have pick seven through 12 in your fantasy draft, go down below or wait till this video is over and go watch that video because that was a fucking ripper. And we heard the feedback. You guys are like, hey, underdog's not the same as ESPN or Yahoo. So now instead of just doing three underdog drafts in this video, we will look at an ESPN draft and a Yahoo mock draft. Compare contrast and tell you why y'all are silly for yelling at me in the comments all right y'all know what to do next tuck it flex it and let's get it all right so draft number one i drafted from the 102 and the strategies are not too dissimilar this time around, right? From 7 through 12, we went in and we wanted our elite wide receiver round one because you were easily able to get your elite running back in round two. And I went the same direction for this draft this time around, okay? So if you're sitting there within the first six picks, you are more than likely going to be able to get one of the elite wide receivers in order of Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Tyree Kill, uh, Jamar Chase, whatever you want to do there. I'm pretty opposed to grabbing one of the top running backs. If it's C-Mac, if it's Eckler, I would probably rather, I'd probably even rather go Travis Kelsey over an Eckler. I'd probably be okay with going Stefan Diggs there at the 106 if that comes to be the case, because on the way back around, you very likely are going to get your pick of what I think is a really solid running back. So you get the high-end wide receiver because you're early in the first draft. You're early in the first round, right? So that kind of like anchors your team at the wide receiver position. And as it relates to the running backs, like, yes, you're not going to be able to get Bijan. It's You're not probably going to get JT down there. I ended up getting Ramondre at the 211. Now, some of y'all might disagree with me, but a lot of times, like, you can see the two picks that happened right before Ramondre, Tony Pollard and Saquon Barkley, right? And it's not out of the range of outcomes for that to happen. We will look through another draft right after this. That's the 102 again. And then I think the third draft that I did was the 105. So we'll have a little variety, but you'll see a lot of the same players and a lot of the same picks end up falling all the way down here. So what I'm looking to do is grab that high-end wide receiver, in the first five, six picks, and then pair it with whatever high-end running back falls to you. If you like Derrick Henry over Ramondre Stevenson, cool, because he's available there as well. Depending on what happens with Josh Jacobs' contract situation, he'll probably be there available too. Ramondre, I just happen to be really, really high on. You know, again, th this video is not really for uh, player analysis. It's more for strategy so that you know where you should be targeting certain players in certain positions. But for me, Ramondre, like I look at this offense and you have Damian Harris gone now. You have Ramondre who... He played the sixth most snaps at the running back position in all of the NFL last year with Damian Harris there for most of the season. Now you've got no depth behind him. He is a really good pass catcher. This offense is going to be better. He scored five touchdowns last year. Now imagine he is like the goal line back in every situation. I would be surprised if he's under double digit touchdowns. So I love Ramondre at the back of the second round, early third round. Now I do want to grab that elite quarterback where we were in the seven through 12 range, right? And I had a lot of picks from the eight spot. And when we got down to the third round, it became a little bit problematic because we weren't able to get Jalen Hurts. We weren't able to get Josh Allen. We were not able to get Patrick Mahomes. Like, as you can see in these drafts, Mahomes went at the 212. I took Hurts at the 32. Josh Allen did end up falling to the 38, but you can't really bank on that if you are in the back half of the first round. So I said, fuck it. I'm grabbing Jalen Hurts, but I'd been fine with Mahomes. I would have been fine with Allen there. I want to anchor my team with the highest scoring position that actually has a positional advantage in fantasy football this year. So I happen to have missed on those guys when I'm in the back half of the first round, pick seven through 12, and I would just get Justin Fields in the next round, in the fourth round. However, I obviously feel more confident and safer with a dude like Jalen Hurts, who is not only a QB one, but a running back one in your quarterback spot. This team is really good. Their offensive line is really good. The weapons are fucking incredible. So I'm taking Jalen Hurts, and I'm not looking back. You really couldn't have won a fantasy football championship last year with one of these dudes at the helm, and I'm I'm here to double double bite down on it. So the third round is where I'd be looking to grab my QB1. And here is the big difference, I think, with being in the first half of the first round 
versus the second half of the first round is that in those drafts, we would get Justin Fields in the fourth round and we would take our wide receiver two in the third round. So we got a lot of Amari Cooper. We got a lot of a DK Metcalf pair with Justin Fields. This time around, we're getting the Jalen Hurts, the Josh Allens, and then we pair him with our wide receiver two on the turnover here. And a lot of the times it's Terry McLaurin, but you can pretty much grab whoever you want there. Like, obviously, I, I probably prefer Cooper or DK Metcalf to Terry McLaurin, but you're waiting a round and a half now. So you grab Terry McLaurin, I'd be fine with DJ Moore, I'd be fine with Brandon Ayuk probably, whatever. But Terry is my wide receiver too. I'm super cool with that. And on the turn, again, this is where I'm I'm grabbing these running backs. I think like the fifth round is so good for running backs. You're getting these workhorses where it's usually the dead zone, but these young explosive backs like J.K. Dobbins, who I don't think people understand how fucking one good J.K. Dobbins was his rookie year. Like he scored a lot of touchdowns, obviously. But when you look at the individual metrics and I'll throw the tweet up on the screen because I don't know the numbers right off the top of my head, but he was pretty much top five in like elusive rating, breakaway run rate, yards per carry, like every efficiency metric as a rookie, obviously tore the ACL when he came back last year, he was clearly less than 100% and still ranked like top 10 or top five in almost all of those categories. So now that he's two years removed from the ACL, this dude in the fifth round with a Baltimore offense that should be fucking loaded and moving the ball without problem and or hesitation, J.K. Dobbins should be drafted onto your team without problem and or hesitation. So I kind of look at that four or five turn as interchangeable. I'm looking for flex players. I'm looking for a running back two and a wide receiver two. I would also be okay doubling down on wide receiver, which I think we do in the next draft because I still think there's a lot of value at the running back position in round six and seven. But you guys know I love the George Kittle six round pick because if you're willing to take Kittle in the sixth round, that's fine. You could also fade George Kittle here and look to grab Dallas Goddard in the next round. I am cool with either of those strategies. So what I think works just as well as this strategy, where it's like wide receiver in round one, running back in round two, QB in round three. If you want to go double wide receivers, like if you start three wide receivers or if it's full PPR, it's probably worth double tapping wide receiver at the four or five turn there. You can get Terry McLaurin and DJ Moore, both guys that are probably going to have a lot of uh, PPR passes or PPR points, maybe fade George Kittle in the sixth round and in, and instead take a running back that might land there. Those guys didn't drop to us right now, but a lot of the times you can get Cam Akers, Madison, David Montgomery, or Damian Pierce, one of those guys at the back of the sixth round. So therefore, up to this point, you'll have three wide receivers and two really good running backs. And in the seventh round, you get the Dallas Goddard. But we ended up going kind of like a little bit of an opposite direction. We took George Kittle at the 6'11", and then we got George Pickens at the 7'2", which was kind of devastating. I don't love George Pickens. Uh, I would have been really happy if I got either Michael Pittman or Mike Evans there at the 7-2, but we had to settle. And again, this is less player analysis, more strategy. The point is you'll be you'll be able to get like your your choosing here of Pickens, Davis, Kadarius, Tony, Jahan Dotson. Like if your first quarterback was Josh Allen, maybe it makes sense to grab Gabe Davis there. So you have that stack. If you're really high on Kadarius, Tony, this is the spot to take him. If you like Jahan Dotson, if we didn't take Terry McLaurin, this is the spot to take him. But I think that wide receiver zone is really, really juicy right here because those like kind of workhorse running backs, the Akers, the Montgomerys, whatever, those usually run out by the time like the beginning of the seventh round hits. So it does seem like it's wide receiver time. And I think more often than not, you're able to get Pittman or Evans or uh, Tyler Lockett or Traylon Burks. I think they just went earlier in this one than typical, but that's where I'd be looking in the seventh round if you are in the early part of the seventh round. Uh, eighth round, I took Isaiah Pacheco, but only because Kamara was off the board already. But I just started kind of racking up flex plays. So it was running back. And then it was Sky Moore. It was Zay Jones. It was Jarek McKinnon. As you could see, have a lot of Kansas City later round guys. I don't want to invest a ton in the Kansas City offense because it's really uncertain behind Travis Kelsey. But if you take dart throws on the McKinnons, the Sky Moores, Pacheco is one of them's probably going to pop off. And you're going to feel really, really good about getting those. So when you get later into the drafts, draft players on good teams. You could see Zay Jones, Jacksonville. Like that's a guy I want to have if Ridley or... Christian Kirk go down at any point. He's going to step in and be a really, really big target in that team. I think he caught 81 passes fucking last year. That's crazy underrated. So just to recap again, like we're looking at that wide receiver, the elite wide receiver in round one. We want to get our RB1 in round two. We want to get our QB1 in round three. So now we're like well-rounded and we can kind of pivot and move how we want. And I've said this quite a few times. If you like Hawkinson a lot, I would target him in the fifth. Otherwise, it's Kittle in the sixth for me, and then it's Goddard in the seventh for me. That's like kind of my tight end strategy going into this year. And you can be flexible with it, but this is kind of the overall like structure of the teams I like to draft. And let's jump into the second draft round two. So you can see that I 
kind of just did the same thing again. So we went Jamar Chase at two. We went Stevenson at the 211. Pollard was a couple picks away. Saquon went like four or five picks away. Again, if you like Derrick Henry more, if you like Josh Jacobs, whoever you like at running back, you can grab there. I, I, I love Ramondre. He is like just a must draft player for me. And I'm grabbing him in the second round of like almost all my underdog drafts. And if you guys are not on underdog yet, I highly, highly suggest you go sign up because these are best ball drafts. You can do as many as you want. You don't actually have to manage any of the in-season rosters. You don't actually have to set lineups or do waiver wires or trades or sit starts or anything like that. That's what best ball is. You just draft a very big team and it starts the best players each position each week. Every draft is at least $3 to enter. And if you win, if you're in the top three, you come back at the end of the year and collect your money, but you don't actually have to manage your roster. You just do the fun shit. You just draft. You just draft from Andre Stevenson in the end of second round every goddamn time. All right. So go download the underdog app. Come draft with us. We are drafting with the people on our discord all the time. All right. So join the discord, but download the underdog app and use code BDGE when you do so. Okay. BDGE will get you a double deposit. Whatever you throw down onto the app, $10, $20, it's going to double it. If you throw down $20 on underdog and use the code BDGE, you'll have $40 on there to play with. And you can do 13 of these drafts to get you absolutely peppered and prepared for your actual draft come the end of August, come early September. You will know these things better than I fucking know these things. You will be on top of your shit. So you'll know the great values, right? When we get to the end of this video, when we go over Yahoo and ESPN leagues, you'll be fucking ripping through those things with an unbeatable team by the time your draft is done. So go to Underdog. The link is down below. Go to the App Store. Go to underdogfantasy.com. It don't matter. They're available fucking everywhere. And use code BDGE if you are depositing for the first time. $10 or more, all the way up to 100 bucks. They will double it. So we doubled down on Ramondre Stevenson and we tripled down on Jalen Hurts. So it's the exact same start. I just want to show you guys consistency because there's no point of doing a strategy video if it's fluky. If I'm telling you to do one thing and it's not actually possible to do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's a system. It's a process. You know, teach a man how to make a marg. He's buzzed forever. But if you just hand him a mark, he's going to black out and do some disastrous shit. We're trying to teach you how to squeeze the juice out of a lime right now. Jalen Hurts, round three. And this is the strategy I was talking about before. Do we double tap wide receiver here? That's what I ended up liking to do. You could have went with Aaron Jones. You could have went with J.K. Dobbins. I could I could have double tapped those guys. You can kind of do whatever you want. But again, I just reserve these spots, the four or five, if you're early in drafts, for the flex positions. And by that, I mean running back wide receiver. So I went with Brandon Ayuk. I went with DJ Moore. At the end of the sixth round, most of the running backs that I liked here were already gone. Akers was picked. Sanders was picked in the sixth. Madison was gone. Damian Pierce went one pick before me, who I would have taken there as my RB2 if he had fallen. But we went with Pittman anyways, and he's my wide receiver four. And in these leagues, in these underdog drafts, you start three wide receivers, and you also have a flex play. So you could start up to four wide receivers. So I don't mind you know, stacking up these wide receivers right now. So we grabbed Pittman, and then we got Goddard in the seventh. So it worked out perfectly. As I said, like you can fade Hawkinson for Kittle in the sixth. You could fade Kittle for Hawkinson or for Goddard in the seventh. And this this stuff just works. And by the time we got to the seventh round, we have a very well-rounded team. We do need to kind of pepper our second running back spot, but that's what we did. As you could see, four of the next six picks. We took Kamara at the end of the eighth. We took Gibson in the ninth. Zay Jones is like one of my most drafted players. Took him in the 10th. McKinnon in the 11th, Kendra Miller in the 12th. So sure, our RB2 spot is not completely solidified, but I've, I would feel really good about how this team came out right now. Like our wide receivers are depthy. They're girthy right now. We got Chase. We got Ayuk. We got DJ Moore. We got Michael Pittman. We got Zay Jones as our wide receiver five. We got Jalen Hurts as our QB one. We stacked him with Dallas Goddard at the tight end position. Like I absolutely love that. And then between Kamara, Gibson, McKinnon, Kendra, like we'll, we'll be able to find a nice RB two there. So I love how this draft turned out. I actually think I like it better than uh, the previous draft, but this is the way I would be attacking it from the one on one, two, three. And we can move to draft number three, which I picked from the sixth spot. And again, kind of executed this plan to perfection, exactly how I wanted to do it. We got our high-end wide receiver one in Cooper Cup, thanks to a little help from someone drafting Travis Kelsey at the two spot. But listen, that shit, that kind of shit's going to happen in your home leagues. A lot of your home leagues, there will be running backs that go earlier. Like I, Eckler will probably go top five in some of your leagues. Bijan too. So Cooper Cup falling to the six, I was... Mwah. 
double chef's kiss up in this mother fudger. Saquon Barkley fell to me in the second round, so we got our wide receiver one. We got our running back one. We got our QB one with Josh Allen at the 3-6. It's just a flawless start. I took Terry McLaurin at the 4-7 because I like him more than Judy, than Mike Williams, than DJ Moore, than Drake London, than the available wide receivers at that point and we have our solidified wide receiver too in the fifth round again you could uh, it's not player analysis it's more strategy you get your choice of who you want at running back to kenneth walker i could have taken dobbins i could have taken miles sanders i could have taken cam Akers. i could have taken damian pierce i just went with kenneth walker why not he's a shiny nice sexy name i think he will be fine sixth round i took mike evans as my wide receiver three and i took Kadarius tony as my wide receiver four so up to this point we did not take a tight end you will notice this is the one kind of caveat here uh, if you're picking in the middle of the draft, sometimes you miss out on these tight ends. And what I would suggest, obviously, like I, I, I don't want to let the tight ends fall all the way through the draft. Like I don't. I obviously want either Hawkinson, Kittle, or Goddard in the middle rounds. If I miss out on them, I'm not trying to start. Like as much as I like Chiggy as like an upside play, I don't want him to be my starting tight end. Like I do want to grab Evan Ingram or David Njoku if I miss out on Dallas Goddard in the seventh round. So Ingram went in the eighth. I miss out on him. Instead, we took Alvin Kamara again, rinse, repeat. I'll keep fucking taking him as much as I possibly can. I got David Njoku after that. So if you miss on Goddard, I like Ingram in the eighth. I like Njoku in the ninth. That would be my tight end strategy there. Took Tyler Boyd in the 10th. Again, just more uh, more flex kind of stuff. Once you get down here, it's a lot less about strategy and a lot more about like player analysis. Get your guys, sleepers, upside, depth chart, zombie, yabba, 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 zabba, abba, zabba, you my only friend type shit. Romeo Dobbs, we took in the 11th. And then Kendra Miller again in the 12th. I have so much Alvin Kamara, Kendra Miller. Like I will, I think I'll be doing that a lot in redraft leagues. And I'm doing this in best ball. So you can imagine the, the share uh, trajectory for actual lineup starting leagues all right so as you can see like I'm, I'm getting very very uh comfortable with the adps on underdog and very very comfortable about how i want to build my team and the reason that i am like so fucking passionate about getting you guys on the platform outside of they're our partner and they're paying us and you guys are supporting the brand by getting on there and using code bdge when you do so it's so that when you get on to platforms like fucking ESPN, you're able to build teams like this. You're able to go with Tyree Kill and then Ramondre and then Pat Mahomes and then J.K. Dobbins and then Keenan Allen and then DJ Moore and then Brandon Ayuk and then Traylon Burks. Like here, here is the thing I'm trying to say is like this was a team on ESPN, right? And a lot of you guys are like, oh, it's not the same. The only difference realistically on these ones is that running backs go a little higher. I don't think you need to change your draft strategy because look at the bench here. Like look at the wide receiver depth you can have on your team if it's a star three wide receiver league this is like the most ideal bench you've ever seen it's obviously only start two wide receivers but you also have a flex play and there's gonna be bye weeks and there's gonna be injuries and there's gonna be busts and you can never have enough wide receiver depth sitting there so i did the same strategy where i was i was picking from i don't know the five or six i got tyree kill i got Ramondre stevenson at like the two eight two nine took pat mahomes on the turn around there so we got our wide receiver our running back our quarterback round four hit the skids, and Keenan Allen almost never drops to uh, wherever we got him here. It was like the 4-9 or 4-10. So I think a lot of the reason why I have Kincaid as my starting tight end, which I do not recommend, was because so many of the wide receivers that you see, like Keenan Allen is an early fourth-round pick on underdog. But I was able to get him at the end of the fourth round. I was able to get Dobbins after him. And then guys like DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Traylon Burks, who are consistently fifth, sixth, seventh-round picks, drop around two rounds later. So when you know that based on underdog ADP, like you know that underdog drafts are way sharper than ESPN and Yahoo drafts because people are paying to get in them, right? And the ADP is really, really crispy. You'll know when you're on the clock, you're like, oh, this dude's not supposed to be here. This dude should be going two rounds earlier. And now I get him at a two round discount. You'll know exactly who to take immediately once you get like a little bit of muscle memory on the underdog platform. So go to underdog, download the damn app and use the damn code BDGE and you could dominate your espn draft like this we'll move over to yahoo not much different cooper cup ramondre stevenson patrick mahomes calvin ridley in the fourth we got terry mclaurin we got alexander madison we got christian kirk deontay johnson Gadarius tony like these teams are crazy the high-end running backs go earlier than normal the tight ends go a little bit earlier than normal as well so that is the only difference i see on the platforms realistically about targeting guys so while these guys are juicy in the middle rounds you might actually have to pay a little bit of a premium and grab the george kittle at the end of the fifth round instead of taking a dude like terry mclaurin 
which is fine because you're getting guys like Christian Kirk in the sixth, seventh round and Deontay Johnson in the seventh, eighth round. So that's the only thing I would keep an eye on. As you can see, the ESPN and Yahoo, I both did not have strong tight ends where that was a focus for me and underdog. So understand that running backs and tight ends go a little bit earlier. You might have to pay a little bit of a premium price, but that's fine because the ADPs are kind of swapped where you don't have to pay a premium price for tight ends in underdog, but you got to do it at the wide receiver position. On those platforms, on ESPN and Yahoo, you got to pay a premium price on tight ends, but not at the wide receiver position. All right, there you have it. That is our draft strategy video for picks one through six. If you are picking from seven through 12, make sure you go watch that video after. If you've already watched it, watch it again. I'm not sure why I did seven through 12 before one through six, but hey, here we are. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, please. We'll be doing videos tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow's video will be six players that your idiot league mates will overlook in fantasy drafts. So we'll jump into some more player analysis. All right. We like to do strategy, but we like player shitting on as well. All right. So I'll see you for that tomorrow. I love you. I'm out of here. Wow.